coming from this way, you should have a camera pointing this way, and I'll, I'll face this way. Are we going to sit next to each other? Hello and welcome to Table Chat. Table I'm your host, chat? Ken. Hope my nose isn't running. I hope it is. <laughs> so that it glimmers in the sunshine? Get all that beautiful snot. Mm hmm. Excellent. How's it going? Good, good. You got questions for I me? I do. I got questions for you. What is this for? Well, now, as you know, I'm a contributing writer with DroneBlog.com. Yeah. And I'm writing an article that's supposed to feature you. Me? Yes, you. Well. For some reason, I think people want to know more about you. Well, I do try to keep myself mysterious. He is. He's a very private individual. But I will, I will be forthcoming for your article. Here's his address if you want to stop by. That's right, one, two, three, any street, this town, USA. So anyway, I sent you these questions on November wait, wait. 5th. Wait, wait, <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll get that in a minute. Good. So anyway, I sent you these on November 5th and you never responded back. It's because I'm lazy. He is lazy, which is why we're doing it this way. All right because Ken's better in front of a camera than he is behind a keyboard. He's not, he's not one of them keyboard quarterbacks, right? <laughs> yeah. right? right? He's a guy of action. That's me. So anyway, question number one. Yeah. Where and when were you born? Cape Canaveral, Florida, 1966. Cape Canaveral, Florida. Yep. That's a far cry from where we know you're from, which is Pennsylvania. Right. Uh, pretty much raised in Pennsylvania and then uh, Dislocated to the south. Yes, dislocated. Right, but uh, it's not I, part of the union. <laughs> well, <laughs> you, you can say that about Florida. I am Florida man. Originally Florida man. Got Florida okay. in my blood. Yep. No, that's good to know. That's All good right. to know. That actually explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, what type of childhood did you have growing up? Oh man, it was idyllic. Yeah. Um, um, Mom and Dad were both in the house? No, 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 no. That's why it was idyllic, because we got rid of Dad. Uh, it sucked, and then we got rid of Dad, and then it was fine. It was really great for the first three years, and then my sister was born. Mm, siblings can do that. I was an only child for three years, and she went ahead and she ruined it all. I'm an only child, so I, 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 I can relate. I, yeah. I couldn't imagine. But I got her back in the end. <laughs> because I'm a successful YouTuber and my stupid sister is a dumb neuroradiologist. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, so I think you I won, won that, that one. one all yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Totally, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we were talking about your early childhood. You have a sister. You grew up in Pennsylvania. You were born in Florida. Yep. What was it like for you in school? You know, how, what type of school student were you? <laughs> What kind of questions? These are life questions. Uh, life, okay. Um, I mean, you're a little nerdy. Were you a nerd in school? I moved around a lot. I, uh, up until I was 16, I moved 14 times. So, Ooh, that's quite a bit. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, just had a time making new friends, and that's how I got really good at it. Just about when you would make a friend, you'd be gone the next day. Huh? Yeah, but instead of withdrawing, as most people do in that situation, I thrived. I, I found it a challenge to make new friends wherever we moved. I was like, all right, screw those friends. I need a new crop. Went out and made a new crop rather than, no, we're just going to move again. I'm not going to make any more friends. Okay. So I went the other way. Well, you're very personable. So yeah, you, you find it very easy to gel with people, strangers yeah. and so yeah, forth. Yeah, so. it's true. Yeah, I'm very, I, I'm, I'm disarming. Now you've been in radio for a long time. Were you aspiring to be in radio growing up? I mean, yes. was that like it's, one of those things you clicked with? It's and, all I ever wanted to do. Really? Yep. Next year I'll be in radio 40 years. And, and did you go to school for that? I did. You went to broadcasting school or did you? There was a broadcasting school. Okay. Uh, originally I did, there was a radio station in my high school. and. 
and I, that's how I got involved in that, WHHS. And then after that, I went to this fly-by-night stupid broadcasting school uh, in Philadelphia that was broadcaster school slash hotel motel management. It was really a, a tax shelter, but I did learn a little bit there, and then I just uh, lied on my resume, told them I had experience, and got hired at a real radio station, learned well, from there. Well, that's a valuable lesson. you got to lie on your resume, and yes, you'll get absolutely. where you need to go in life. Nobody checks the so. resumes. <laughs> Nobody checks. You know, fake it till you make it. That's what I say. Growing up, who inspired you? Mm, like a... Well, like you, a, you're a big fan of going fast, so I would oh, say there was a I, little bit of Mario Andretti influence in there at some point. I can't. <laughs> I think it's not like a musician where you can be like, you know, Jimmy Page inspired me, you know. Okay. I, just, I was just influenced by the people around me, and luckily for me, uh, uh, it was mostly my grandparents. and They were good people. Very good people. Yeah. So. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. Well, we're going to move on. Early life's over. That was easy, right? Oh, good. Ken, don't have to remember that anymore. Good. It's done. It's Gone. <laughs> Let's move on to your work life. All right. <laughs> we already covered it, but... What, what, what drew you to radio? I really want to know what drew that passion. I mean, it's not something most people would choose. That's a good question. I actually, um, wow. All right, the beeping was. Um, so when I was very young, my, my grandfather uh, was legally blind and he'd have to dictate his stuff for his uh, secretary at the time to transcribe. And he had all these cool recording machines. He had one that made an actual record. Oh, neat. It, on, on like a plastic sure. record. And I was just fascinated with that. And he had a dictating machine in the office that was recorded. And then I got a, um, I remember one Christmas, somebody gave me a tape recorder for Christmas. And then somebody else in my family, probably my dad, got me a tape recorder for the same Christmas. So I had two tape recorders and I discovered if I recorded myself at the same time on both of them, started play a half second behind the other one, it sounded like an echo. An echo, sure, the echo effect. And that's where my fascination with sound was. So made. you were drew to audio because of the effects and the differences I, I, yeah. you could make. That, no, that's interesting. That's yeah, so I, I just started playing with the cassette player and, and then I started interviewing like the UPS man and you know, the handyman, whoever would come over. And then I found out that people would actually pay you to sit in a chair in an air-conditioned room and push buttons and talk. And that was it. I was hooked. I was like, that's for me. Wow, I'm hooked too. I mean, I never thought of it from that perspective. You sit in a chair all yeah. day, it's air conditioning. Yep. Boy, yeah, working in construction, that was a dumbass. You, you, you push a button <laughs> and then uh, you talk and then you push another button, the song comes on. So now, so Grant, your grandfather had a big influence on you and the technology that he had available due to a disablement. Yeah, disablement, that's my, a word. My own grandfather was legally blind. and Was he? Yeah, and, and what he would do is he'd sit in the kitchen and listen to the radio. Yeah, you know, so, uh, one of the greatest compliments I ever had, and this happened two or three times, um, from blind listeners that listen to my morning shows, because I'll, you've heard my morning show. Sure. I, I, I'm very aware of like, uh, if we're telling a story to include music if necessary, sound effects if you have to, to add to the story. And the biggest compliment I ever got was from these blind people that called and said, you're, you're really painting a picture with your stories. Yeah, you tell I, a real story even though you don't have a visual aid. Right, if you're blind and listening to the radio and I'm able to convey a scenario in your mind when you don't have that visual reference, Oh, that's, that's a huge compliment. Now, here's an easy one. How many stations have you worked for? You want to count them? Well, we got one, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six, these are, seven. Uh, you can't see it, but these are all the call letters from all my radio stations, starting from there. We can count them later. Maybe 22 or three. Well, there must be more on the other side down there. Nope, that's it. That's it. Yeah, so a lot. In radio, you travel a lot. You, you get bounced around from station to station. And, and Bounce around is a nice typical. way of, of putting being laid off. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's a kind way. If 
like mo most radio hosts get around. True? Uh, no, not really. Well, they're not all uh, Howard Stern's where they no, well, have most, an empire. Most radio hosts are small market radio hosts, and they okay. will stay there forever. They become part of the community. But I, I always had aspirations of becoming syndicated. That's been my main thing. And in order to do that, you have to be on a morning show in a larger town and uh, get picked up. And, uh, that's what I tried to do. And so by working in a larger town, you are uh, you're beholden to the ratings system. And if, if you know you suck, then you're out. Or if you're awesome and you get a new manager, that sucks, then you're out. Even if you're awesome, your manager can suck. And that's happened a bunch of times. So through no fault of my own. Sure. Because every show that I've ever been on has been awesome. In fact, speaking of Howard Stern, me and a guy named Beaner in Syracuse, New York, came in as a Howard Stern replacement because there was a bunch of stations dropping him at sure. one time. There was that controversial period. Yeah. yeah. And this radio station in Syracuse dropped him, brought us in, and we beat him in the ratings. Nice. In our first ratings period, which is saying a lot well, up against Howard Stern. Now, you mentioned syndication, and you're currently at Paducah 98.3. Right. And you're doing a morning show, and you're syndicated there. Yes, we're doing it ourselves. We're, uh, you know, you can, you needed satellite or a company behind you way back, right. like 90s, 2000s. Now, with the internet the way it is, you can go from medium or small market to larger markets. It's different. It's vastly different now yeah. than, than it was. So, but, yeah, we're on in we're on in three cities right now. We things change, and, and you've seen a lot of change in radio. Yeah. Over the years, you've seen a lot of change in drones over the years. Yeah. So I mean, you know, if you live long enough, I guess. You're going to see yeah. a little bit of it yeah. all. Yeah. <laughs> I hope to see more of it all. So, now, what is your most memorable hosting experience? That one that just sticks out among all the rest. On the radio? On the radio. Well, I mean, there was... There was times where, you know, we did charity stuff for sick kids or, you know, that we, we did a lot of work. Uh, uh, for Habitat for Humanity and good, with, good with veterans, you know, uh, but there was, there was, there was one, there was one moment. He, he's tearing up here. There's a that, bug on my glasses. Moment, no, well, <laughs> there is, there is a moment that's very memorable. And uh, I'm going to bring my voice down because we're out in public, but uh, I was on a rock station in Huntsville, Alabama. Testing, testing, can you hear me? And um, for Easter, we gave away rabbits. Oh, nice. Sort of. <laughs> the rabbit is a name of a vibrator. Oh. <laughs> because it has ears. Yes. And uh, we had someone come in and demonstrate really for us yeah we uh put newspaper over the windows and uh, i had a microphone in her lap she had a microphone up here and um i'll email you the audio it's okay and as, it's, it's the, as the host you had to paint the picture of this happening no right? no you could hear the paint <laughs> And um, I would say that the blind guys listening, it was a vivid the, picture. They could see the paint. Oh, they could, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, but that's not why it's memorable. Um, because, well, I would say, I would say that we're probably one of the first, if not the first, to have a girl in the air. But here's the funny part. The funny part was that my general manager at the time, who had a broom up his ass, uh, came in and said, that have better been sound effects. <laughs> and we assured him that it was sound effects. Take it right from Harry Met I Sally, right? I said, I'm a great Foley player. And I was all that, um, I was, you know, 
all that. <laughs> that was me. And he's like, Whew. but the reality is, the reality was that some, was not you. There was a girl petting her rabbit on the air. Interesting. I, I, okay, that's it. Um, <laughs> that's, that ends the interview. Get back here. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah. moving on to your drone photography. Okay. Where we're going to leave the radio behind. But, right. but Ken's been in radio pretty much his whole life. Yep. And he, he is an impressive <clears throat> talent. And you should listen to him. You listen to him on live radio in the mornings at 98.3 on uh, openradio.com. And uh, you can get in on some of his hijinks. There's so. plenty of hijinks. It's fun where I am now because I'm in a rare situation where we, you know, there was a consolidation of radio companies in the late 90s. Yeah. You know, Clear Channel bought everything. There was deregulation. Before a certain point, you couldn't own a bunch of stations. But then they changed that, and then so it got all corporatized. And That's how we're seeing the monopolies we are today. We're... Right. That's why we have iHeartRadio. Yes. Great. So uh, I'm lucky right now that I work for one of the few radio companies still owned by one dude. Truly independent. Yes, we have no corporate overlords. It's 100,000 watts of what we want. And, and it's always rock, so. And it's classic rock. It, it is fantastic. It well, is fantastic. The morning show certainly is. Well, thank you. It is good. It is good. Now, Kat, when did you get into piloting drones? I mean, you were one of the earliest adapters, as far as we can tell. So you've been eh. doing this good 10, 12 years now. Uh, since 2012, 2012, yep. Um, I wanted to get a shot of the radio station where I was working. It was a big red barn, and I wanted to get a, a shot, a pull-away shot of the, the barn. That, that was the only lure? Uh, that was it. Really? Wow. And so I bought one of these stupid <laughs> helicopter things, Yeah. And, uh, and I was like, well, this can't lift very much. So I bought one of those key ring cameras. I thought, that's light. So I taped it on there, and it crashed. <laughs> and then uh, my girlfriend at the time, who knew this, she bought me my first drone. Now you still have that though. Yep, it's a Hudson. Yep, uh, she's gone, but I still have the drone. Well, that's the way it should be. Yeah, and then I just gradually upgraded from there, started posting stuff online, and so what? Is it you... still going? Yeah, it's still yeah. going. All right. So what led you to creating TNL or Thursday Night Live? and doing a weekly show for five years without missing a beat. <laughs> well, uh, Dana Williams, uh, he's in a band called Diamond Rio. Diamond Rio, yeah. and, and he and I uh, were hanging out for a while, and he suggested that. And I, I did it, and then I just started doing it every week. And just out of habit, I kept doing it for five years. And then I thought, well, that's enough. Uh, uh, I, I, I'd like to try to get one of these girlfriend things again. And that worked out pretty well. It did, yeah. For so a I while. do it every other week, and uh, yeah. Yep. But yeah, it's now a bi weekly show. Um, you're, you're right at the break of 200,000 subscribers on YouTube. Yeah. That's quite an accomplishment. Oh, thanks. And it takes a bit of work to put YouTube videos together, this and that. It does, but it's not. It's it's really not fair. It's because, I mean, clearly you can see my chiseled features and my porcelain skin is in the hair, the hair and, and just my overall gorgeousness is what brings the subscribers in. I imagine there's a lot of ladies that just subscribe just to watch me on mute. Just for the hair. Yeah. They'll watch all my videos, but they don't need to hear me talk. They no, just not at all. watch me on mute. And some of them do listen to my voice as I lull them to sleep. And uh, I imagine that's why I go in my analytics and it's 97% dudes. Yeah, lots of dudes. It's a sausage fest on my channel, but well, I don't care. That's fine. That's the drone community. 90% dudes, 10% ladies, and most of them don't even want to be there. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you've been doing TNL for a long time. You've become this commu drone community sort of guru, you know. Oh, well. A lot of people have been touched by you, your videos, and have picked up a controller and a drone because of you telling them to. What do you have to say to that poor guy? The guy that I'm touching? Yeah. Oh, well, I, <laughs> I do uh, consider it an honor to be 
part of this community. And uh, I, I take being a, a drone ambassador seriously. And uh, it's rewarded me and enriched me and I've gained a lot of new friends and it's just a wonderful thing to be a part of. So because drones are photography, yeah. you know, and videography, right? You, you have quite a bit of experience with videography. You, you pretty much had a camera in your hand since you were a teenager and yeah. never put one down. How does that compare to what you do with drone photography? What photography experience do you have? Oh, I mean, just the whole flying thing is because it's some people, some people fly drones for the photography. Some people fly drones just for the flight of it. I know people that fly GPS drones just for flying. They don't even record. I remember you in the beginning. I would have to remind well, you no, to record. I, I, I agree. I, you know, when I was still, you know, a hobbyist pilot, I usually didn't record. I, I was more enamored by seeing it on the screen, not thinking that I might want to see it again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just fun to fly the whole thing. It's just, oh. that's the number one superpower that people would choose over invisibility or anything else is the power of flight. And we can do that now thanks to technology. All the really good super people have the built that we right? fly. So yeah, you don't have true. to buy a cape, just buy a drone and you're flying. That's what I like about, it. I mean, photography is part of it, but the whole flying thing is just amazing to um, to be able to navigate 3D space and to put a camera wherever you want. You know, like uh, I remember um, the early days from movies. You see these amazing shots in movies. Like, how the hell did they do that? Oh, well, sure. And, and I didn't. This is before I even knew about drones. Like, you know, early 2000s. Like, how did? Because they they've been doing this for a long time. In, Hitchcock in, did the first green screen as far as we're all concerned, although it wasn't technically a green screen. Right, but I'm talking about so. all these shots you see in movies where there, it has to be a drone. And uh, it's, before I knew about drones, I'm like, what is that on a wire? How are they doing it? <laughs> and then I, I saw how they did it. I was like, oh, I gotta do that. And, and today you do. You do, and the, the mystery of it is gone because everybody knows about drones, the existence of them, but you can- Ah, oh, they're you can still st pulling off some amazing Oh yeah, shots. you can still create uh, <laughs> magic and they're, instigate, they're instituting more FPV shots into movies now too, so that's good. Now, between your radio life and your YouTube life, which would you say is the hardest? Oh, YouTube. YouTube's For the sure. hardest? I've done radio so long right now, it's, just, it's effortless. It's even more effortless sitting there pushing the button in air conditioning comfort. <laughs> the hard part about radio is to figure out what you're going to say. I can sit here, you could leave right now, yeah. and I could talk and make it interesting and compelling. Yes, you could. Uh, until the batteries ran out. And Absolutely. That, that is a superpower that it, I know I and have. And it's something you actually do. I do, every day, you know, I do. And you, I, I uh, bring that into the YouTube world, hopefully making it compelling I don't run out of ideas you know well, there's always something to do what we're talking about is as a radio host Ken does have to do voice practicing and voice practice I do you know he, he does different voices he does different sounds I don't practice it well I don't I don't rehearse I you just, don't rehearse your show but you you'll right. you'll sing a song or something to keep oh. your voice in tune or, or oh yes get yes. it to a point where you're comfortable where it's at because you strain it well, I'm 57 now. Uh, other people my age, you know, your voice changes as you age. And I try to keep my voice in good operational function by pushing it sometimes. I'll sing a song that's a little bit out of my key just by myself. Or, you know, if, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. And a lot of those he won't share with the rest of the world, but I do have one that he sent me. No, 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 that's just for you. That's just, that's just for you. I, I have hard drives filled with bullshit. <laughs> so we're just about done. Okay, Chris. Okay, right. I know it's tough on you. Yeah. Ken can talk forever unless it's about himself. <laughs> so we've seen some big changes in the way you operate your YouTube channel recently, you know, it's been a long time since you did any changes. So yeah. nobody had any issues with that. Where do you see it going from here into the future? 
Mm, I don't know. That's a fair answer. It, you know, every, it, everything evolves. Um, if you go back and look at some of my earlier videos, they're a different approach than what I do now. I think, and I'm lucky, after a certain amount of time being on YouTube, people will tune in to you because they're invested in you, the, the creator. Yeah. The, yeah, in, in me. That's not hubris, that's just a fact. And uh, so I incorporate more personal stuff now in videos than I did. You do. I was just uh, do. telling people how this drone works or how good this is or how much of this sucks. Or Although we'd, we'd watch you review the egg drone forever. I mean, literally, yeah. forever. We would sit here and watch forever him beating that drone with a hammer, the cable, whatever he could get his That was on. fun. That was so. fun destroying it. <laughs> but there are, uh, you know, I'd say out of the almost 200,000 subscribers I have, uh, there are two or 3,000 people that would watch any damn thing I put on there. Well, I'm among them. So. Like, if I, did a, <laughs> if I did a video of just me sitting here as the sun went down, somebody would watch the yeah, whole thing. Like, what that. is he doing? Why is he doing You know what I mean? <laughs> I'd probably text you and, with that and, question. And I would never do that. But <laughs> thank you for watching. Thanks for watching the bullshit. Okay. Well, the last one, and this one is a little bit of a toughie because it's the last question. Go ahead. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. Can you handle it? If you go back and change anything since becoming a drone pilot into where you are now, what might that be? What? From when you started flying. Yeah. Is there anything you would change if you could go back? Oh. Like maybe crashing a $30,000 drone that didn't belong to you or something. I don't know. Oh. You know, something, anything. Give me something. No, man. <laughs> that had to happen exactly as it happened. Well, it was content, right? It was great yeah, content. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would never have seen that cabin or you in a suit. That was good. That's good stuff. No, I, you know, I just take it as it comes. Um, yeah, we made the best of that worst case scenario we had. Yeah. So, and that's typically what you do. So there's really no regrets. No, no regrets. Awesome. No. That's a good way to live, man. Yeah. Being sure, sure of yourself and certain of your decisions that when you look back, you don't really regret anything. You regret giving this interview? No, not at all. <laughs> uh, I have a question for you. On the bright side, you won't read the article I write from this, so I don't got to worry. Is that camera on? No, I quit. Did it? Yeah, no, we only got that one. Oh, but that's okay. All right. That's what we needed, and that's what we got. Is that it? Is that? Try to make right. it easy. I was going to. Um, got anything you want to add? You have it. Well, no, I was waiting for a super serious question where I could take off my glasses and go, well. Hmm. Well, in the highly political state of our world nah. today, <laughs> how do you feel about transgenderism? <laughs> That's a wrap. <laughs> chickadee, chickadee, chick. All right, this is Keith's thing. This is.